to educate, motivate, and build one another through shared knowledge and success. This is the Young and Successful Podcast, and these are your hosts, Che Chukwi and Kenny Awashika. Welcome back to the Young and Successful Podcast. Our guest today is Mr. Emeka Anyadegu. Emeka is the founder of Obioma Fashions. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, sir. How are you doing? I'm great. How about yourself? And we're hanging in here, man. We're trying to become more stylish like you, you know? You seem to be the master <laughs> of fine threads and everything. So talk to us, man. <laughs> Tell us yeah. a little bit about, about what is it you do. I mean, um, I mean, from from what we see, man, you guys have so it seems you guys have some really cool designs made from the motherland and uh really impressive stuff. Tell us how did you get into that? So um I started because mainly my my father wants to get into the business it's a family right. business and also my sister she's already in the business as well she started her company a few years back called zuva and that went well so we wanted to um work with her so she used to do pop-up shops back in the right. day so we used to go to them you want to you want to join her in that journey and do doing African fashions as well. So we started in 2016. We started doing, um, at first we wanted to do just men's. Then right. we realized that there's a big market in, in, in ladies, women's wear. So right. we decided to do women and men. And we decided to do all sizes as well. So we can um, get everybody who wanted African clothes. It can be, it can be accessible to everybody. Because right. sometimes it's not size inclusive. So we want to make sure that everybody in different sizes can all fit, can all wear African clothes. African clothing. Yeah. African clothing. So yeah, so we started in 2016. We mainly did pop-up shops. We like vended at events. We we travel around. We used to like sell clothes at pop-up shops or we vend at different events. So those those were it was it was fun, but it was hard doing that because sometimes we did well, sometimes we didn't do well. So we right. had to um figure out what's our strategy moving forward. So now but now the pop shops, we don't do them as much. Now we're just mainly online and we do fashion shows. Like I was in DC Fashion Week a few weeks ago. Last month, right. I saw Kenny. Kenny was there as well. I saw him there, and um, we did Chicago Fashion Week in Chicago. We did that um, at the Water Tower. That was last weekend. So, so we. So um, this this fashion shows you're talking about is fashion shows. That's always an exciting situation. Uh, what happens? You just have, yeah, absolutely, man. We've all seen it, man. Models running down the runway, you know what I mean? Full sprint, which, by the way, I think I can be a model. We'll talk about that later on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, how is how is this how this fashion shows? How are they? How do they play out? Like you just have your design up there with models running down the runway, or so what we do is there's two types of fashion shows. So there's one when we get invited to right. them, and it's one where um, I I apply and I become and I go to one of someone else's fashion show. So, mm -hmm. um, in Chicago and DC, they already have models that they, they used that are already in the show who've been mm -hmm. practicing their walk. I went to the fashion show, I met models, and I picked the models who I liked or that would, would fit my scene. And also had some outside models as well walk for me. It's great because I get to pick who I like and I do a fitting to see who fits the clothes. Sometimes colleges hire us to perform at their schools. Right. So those are times when colleges pay us to be in their show. I get to go to colleges and I get to see a new market of people. Yeah, yeah. I actually, actually met him in uh, at, at George Washington University when he uh, when he came over for one of the fashion shows. So mm -hmm. most colleges have this fashion week, 
and then you know of course folks like him come and then it blows everybody out um well yeah man thanks thanks for thanks again for taking the time to be on the show um i know you've been doing this for for a while now maybe about four years or so five years five years five yep. years yeah okay so i think i met you about four years ago and i see that you've been making a lot of improvement to your materials right and i know covid has really done some damage to that industry can you tell us a little bit how you've been surviving this whole covid you know a lot of people are not going to the african parties and all that stuff anymore and there was this period where black panther was a major hit and everybody wanted an african material black panther 2 is about to come back out you know tell us how covid has impacted your business and what you're doing now to get ready for the next big demand for african clothing yeah so COVID hurt us a lot because, um, yeah, most people buy clothes for events like weddings, parties, you know, they wear it to look good for an event. So then once COVID hit, many events got canceled, fashion shows got canceled, weddings, religious events, everything got canceled. The market is way less than it used to be. So... And also, so college fashion shows. So my, so my, my my record for one school year was fifteen shows, and then the following year I was wow. about to break the record. Thank you. And then the the following year I was about to break the record. I was about to get at least twenty, but um, COVID hit, so I was only able to get nine shows. Like my last show was in the beginning of March. Then two weeks later, COVID happened. It was a quarantine, so everything got canceled. So, yeah, my business got hurt because I had a lot of colleges cancel their um, my colleges cancel yeah, their shows, yeah. on their shows. So that hurt my business a lot. This year now, 21, 2022, things are picking up heavily right now, very much so. Like, so... We have already six for this semester, so hopefully, so next semester, hope to get like 15 or so, and I want to just promote the brand, get more pictures, get more videos of our clothes, just to make it as good as possible, so we can speak to it, so we're known by more and more people. Do you, I mean, they... do you get a good conversion rate? Do you get a good conversion rate from those events? Like, do people start buying? Do you just see a bunch of demands on your website now when you go to those when you go to those events? Not really. Here, here and there, I might get a sale or two, but I I mainly go there because they give me they give me money beforehand, so they pay me to be there. If I get anything else, that's an add on. Like, um, I did a fashion show a few weeks ago in Pittsburgh and then someone loved the clothes and then now they want us to produce outfits for them. And um, also I did a show at John Hopkins before and then a student there um, bought some more clothes for me later on. So that happens. I'm going to get sales here and there from colleges. But the thing is, most college students are broke and they don't really have that much money to spend Cause they're like, <laughs> like when you're working, when you're at school, most of the time, you can't work a job as much as you when you're full time working. So you don't have as much money to spend on clothes. Also, even though I don't get a sale, when I go there, I get like followers come to my. I get more followers on my social media pages, so I'm gonna get more um followers on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. and that's. That's good. That, that that can lead to more sales in the future, and it makes the business more legit when you have more followers. So that that's a good part. And I also get like great images too. Like most of the shows, they hire photographers and videographers take pictures and videos. So I'll take those got content and use that for my to expand as well. First of all, just being able to weather the storm in the pandemic, right? Anyone who had a business uh, through the through that lockdown period and made it to the other side, they did something right. That's the first thing. So I think that that's really incredible. Um, 
the the other thing is like you mentioned before with the social media and things like that i think it's it's absolutely uh social media is it's one of i think it's really a blessing as much as it's uh, a very difficult thing to deal with as well in today's society i think it's a blessing because you as an entrepreneur you get to go out there put your creations out there and you can market yourself without having to pay other people uh thousands of dollars to do it for you so i think it's really it's really cool that you're, you're taking advantage of that and you seem to be on the move a lot now what what would you say is the toughest part for you so far in the fashion business the toughest part is finding the right events to go to right. that can um lead me to getting what i want finding the right events to have to do research so right now i live in chicago so right. i try to go to chicago fashion shows chicago events to network and um get my name out there and right. also the other thing is getting sales is also hard as well i've been doing facebook ads instagram ads and it's just it's still hard to get sales with the in, how is how how are sales on instagram been going because a lot of people rave yeah. that instagram is the place how has that been going for you tell us how you how you're handling that are you selling on instagram right now because you should be covering all Sorry. these followers facebook, facebook marketplace did i say instagram i meant facebook marketplace so we don't do marketplace okay. we do facebook shop it's a little different so marketplace is more for like informal selling like if you have like a used couch that you okay. don't want anymore you can <laughs> yeah, sell yeah. that <laughs> yeah, other people <laughs> which is a shop like an actual business you know yeah, so I guess I meant more like the shop because you know, I said <laughs> marketplace. Shop. Because, you know, Actually, I did not yeah, know, I know Facebook, like, at Facebook shop. So, yes, that's what I'm referring to, uh, the Facebook store. How has that been going for you? Um, Yeah, we've been... So the Facebook shop in the store, it helps us get people on our site. But it's right. still hard to get the actual conversion of purchasing something. That's We don't always get as many sales as we want to. Of course. So, so we've even like working on our, our website. We've been doing all these like shoots to get great pictures for our products. But it's it's still hard to get the ultimate conversion. Like people think mm -hmm. that, oh, you own a business, you make a thousand sales a day, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not, not working like that. Wants to sell I mean, I wish that easy. Yeah, like people think oh, you own a business, so you should be making all this money and making all, all these sales every single day. But sales are hard to come by. That It's like hit or miss. So I just try to do other sales to make revenue. Like I try to do like more wholesale. We make clothes for designers. We can produce your entire line for you. So we, we do that as well. We also... We we just finished our first um a college. College has a dance team. So we made their their skirts. So now instead of making sales like straight retail sales, we're trying to do more, more wholesale sales to um to teams, to schools or, or to um companies. We're trying to get like unique with sales. From the from the passion side of things, what would you say? has been your favorite project to date ever since you got into this which project have you enjoyed the most whether it was like a fashion show or like a design that you put together probably just this this year and as a whole i did a lot of shoots right so i'm pretty much part of all the shoots but my my favorite one would probably my dance shoot mm. i also love to dance as well okay. so I love mixing dance and fashion. So I did, did a dance shoot where I danced to different songs and we had like a cypher as well. Dance have with other dancers. I love dancing. Yeah. So mixing this is dancing. Like, is this like fashion. hip hop, hip hop dance? Afro? Afro beats. Uh, Afro I do. Um, I dance to Afro beat, Caribbean, R&B, and okay. some hip hop. 
but my my favorite is R and B, probably dancing R and B songs. We can talk a lot more about dancing because I like to dance too. But uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit. Um, so we, we, we're currently getting out of COVID, and you seem to have survived COVID. Um, so what are, what are the next big steps for you? Because I know it, to have been in business for five years, it's a big accomplishment. A lot of people don't make it to year five. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't make it to year seven. But I know you're gonna make it way longer than this because you have the uh, you know you have the drive. Uh, I can sit in you. I think ever since I met you four years ago, I know I, I know I know I know you're gonna make it far. Um, so yeah, what's the next what's the next big thing for you? The next step that I want to do is. I want to get into movies, into TV shows. If I can have a scene in the Black Panther where they're all wearing my clothes, you know, like for a part they're having a party, so they're all wearing my clothes, that would be an amazing. I, that's my next step. If I can get something like that, that would be powerful. And also, I'd also love to get a studio, and it can be used as a store an event space and a dance studio all in one. So right. I love to, I love to do that. I'll have all three, like have a, a story, selling clothes. And then when that's over, it'll be like dance classes there, have a space, have a pretty much a space. I had a space before in the DMV area in Silver Spring, Maryland, mm -hmm. but I left that couple couple of years ago, and I haven't got a place since. So, say for someone who is trying to get into fashion as well, right? And just even trying to step out as an entrepreneur, what advice would you give them into this space? That's a good one. I would advise them to like pretty much spend the first couple of years finding what you're good at. And once you find it, just keep on doing that. Like that, make that be your your main thing. And just focus focus on that, but do other things as well. But focus on what you're good at. For us, we found out that we're good at at college fashion shows. The thing is that we we um, find out that like many colleges want need, need designers, so. I started to reach out to them and then, and now I'm getting a lot more contracts for fashion shows because I figured out what I need for them, what I need to be successful in them. And I made it happen. And now, and now college fashion are doing well. Now the, the, um, the other college, the colleges who see me, like a dance team might be at that show and they may like like that, like the clothes, then they may get an order for their entire dance team to get clothes from us, you know? Nice. So right. pretty much doing what you're good at, at a spot, mastering that, and, and from there, you can expand from there as well. And That's really good. Also, also making sure that you love what you do and also like don't quit your day job yet until <laughs> you know that's a good one <laughs> hey you know you can do it. that's big facts right there yeah because a lot of times people will they're like oh i'm an entrepreneur but yet yeah, you know when you're an entrepreneur it's like managing your time is hard because you have a full-time job then after work you gotta do your business you may not have time to do what you really want for your business because you're you're working like 12 hours yeah. or like you know like and me, you still have me, bills me. to pay yeah exactly yeah you got bills to pay and you got you got things to do so like Maybe. right now i'm a i'm a math teacher yeah right. i love i love my job it's it's a hard job though like even right now it's been couple hours at school's over and I'm still here. Hey, listen, man, it's not going to be too long. The fashion shall break out and you should spring out of that school. 
<laughs> like a bat out of hell. <laughs> there we go. Um, but I, I, I definitely agree with you, man. Find something that you're interested in. Be consistent with it. Enjoy what you're doing. And don't quit your day job. I think that's the recipe right there, man. Those those components, I don't think that uh, you can skip over them like that because it, it also shows discipline, right? And that's the same discipline that you carry on to when you're just rolling solo in your own business. So I think that that's, that's absolutely incredible. Like we said earlier, you, you, you've made it a long way, man. Five years. Five years is a long time. Um, I know we just started, <laughs> so we're looking forward to make it to five years. So congratulations on your Absolutely. five years. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, uh, that's what else do you call that? That's that's that is major success. That and, is success. Uh, you're still doing going. something right. You're still sure. going. You know, you don't have to be the biggest name yet, but I'm sure you're gonna be one of those names on those Hollywood uh, screens pretty soon. Um, hey, yeah. So uh, I think even the biggest names took time to grow. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. There you have to there's the there's the process mm -hmm. to get to 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 that top. And sure. you also have to enjoy that journey, is what I say. Yep. Yeah, like a a few years ago, you right. watch your so called insecure, the costume department bought some clothes for me. Oh wow. But I never saw the clothes in in the actual show. But mm. it's still great that they bought clothes for me. So hopefully, like, one day I can just be all the all Hollywood or all uh, movies, movies, film, TV, whoever needs clothes, African clothes, they can come for me, come to me, and I can provide them great clothes for, right. for all these sets, you know, for everything. Well, uh, before we close this one out here, uh, it's just the final question we like to ask everyone is, what is your definition of success? What does that mean to you? Um, success is waking up and doing what you love every day mm -hmm. and enjoying it and wanting to be there. Like even me, I'm a math teacher. I love my job. It's a hard job. Some days are better than other days. Like there's some days where I just don't want to be there. But there are days where I I love being there. So pretty much waking up and knowing that you love what you want to do. You love, yeah, like me, I love math. I love math. I'm good at math. Like when I was a kid in seventh grade, I was in algebra in middle school. Right. In eighth grade, I was in geometry. So I took high school wow. classes in middle school uh, and then even in high school i was in honors and advanced classes so yeah like math is my thing right. so now that i'm here teaching math to the next generation i i love it because um i'm just spreading the knowledge and me being black like mm -hmm. most of my students are black as well latino so them seeing a black person who's good in math teach them is important for them because they may not see too many. So like we, we get we, we get a lot, a lot of bad stereotypes to us, to yeah. black people from the media. So them not seeing, they may only see like rappers and athletes on TV yeah. or so not many like scientists, opticians. So me being a math teacher, saying, hey, I'm good in math. You can be good in math too, you know? And then me believing and believing in me. Yeah. Hey, do you do you do, yeah. do you apply any of those mathematical equations to your uh, materials? Because I know some of those materials be having some crazy Fibonacci uh, sequences on them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I use math for business. And yeah, I use like like geometry, like I like the, the shapes, the shapes are important on the fabrics, the shapes, the patterns. I love, I love using like unique sh shapes for a fat, a fat a fabric, you know, I love those. So yeah, I use, huh? I use more geometry. So for, for the actual clothing, I use geometry more, but then like 
for the admin part, I'll use like algebra so for the functions, you know. No trigonometry. <laughs> Hey, geometry is the uh, trigonometry is the advanced level of the hey. of the trig, right? So uh, listen, man, hey, you, you, gotta, you, know, you, you gotta cut those shapes <laughs> and get us get us ready to go to space. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Hey, the only that went on this space suits. Yo. Hey, look, man. I think that that is something very powerful you said there, especially uh, you know, to say you should be the change you want to see in the world, right? Yes, and um, thank you for for being that change that we all want to see in the world as well. Because I think, especially for for, for black kids, right? Uh, a lot of times they just see what they see because it's what they see all the time in, in media. But the reality is very different. You know, um, everything else that people think out there is just, it's just their imagination and what they see in the media. So thank you for, for, for being intentional about that, you know, because not people might just be saying it's a job, but... Uh, you're intentional about it because you have a mission behind it and having the young black kids being able to see you doing what you're doing and i think that's better for the future so yeah and also also like to incorporate like african and black history into mathematics well. so they can see themselves in their own history because a lot of times for for mathematics you only learn about the european um european Asian um, leaders in math and science, mm -hmm. but like Africans contribute a lot to math and science over like the past thousands of years. You know, like we had great empires. Like you, how can you build these great structures without mathematics? You know, we we had mathematics, science, engineering. We had the we had like some societies had them that were on par with or even better than anywhere in the world at that time. So yeah. like we had to say, hey, we had to embrace this history and say, hey, if our ancestors did it, why can't we do it, you know? And Absolutely. that's why I got to teach my students that, hey, we're black and our history we have a history of mathematics and science. We have a history. We can't let, we have to embrace it and use it to better our community and the world, you know? Absolutely. I agree with that. You know what? As a matter of fact, Kenny, yes, sir. next time we invite Mr. Emeka over, man, we got to go deep into some black history. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's shake the soul of the people. You know what I'm saying? I love it. <laughs> All right. Hey, <laughs> Listen, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Emeka Anyadegu, founder of Obioma Fashions. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today, brother. And keep doing the good work. Thank you very much, y'all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for the invite. Yeah. A great time. Yeah, the last time we was to do this, but my Wi-Fi was messing up. For some I know, man. The Wi-Fi was shaky, bro. It was shaky. But you know what? <laughs> the devil is alive. We have done it. You know what I mean? We did Success. it, mama. We did it. Success. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, I love it. Hey, until next time. Che out. Double All right. out. Take care. Ka Messia and Ibo means bye. Kachifo. Odabo and Yoruba. Kachifo. <laughs> which one is which one is Kachifo? Kachifo. Ibo. Kachifo. How do you say it in, in, uh, in Yoruba? Odabo. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. What is another one? Oh. Uh, yes, what's that? Was, uh, yeah, carry or something like that? Peace out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <this>. <laughs>